Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the do's and the don'ts for drawing a dog's eye in graphite pencils. These tips can also be applied to other animals eyes or other subjects too but I've just used the dog's eye as an example here. If you do any of the don't things please don't be offended because I'm not saying that art which uses the don't techniques are bad, these are just my personal preferences. So let's get into the video now. So my first don't would be to don't outline everything in a thick, hard line. These lines will be very hard to rub out or blend. Putting harsh outlines can look very unnatural because in reality, things aren't usually outlined in this way. Some things are, for example, the outer edges of the eye may have many harsh outlines or even some highlights in the eye might have harsh outlines. It's best to study your reference photo and decide which parts of the drawing have harsh outlines and which ones do not. In this clip, I'm outlining every part of the eye, including all the shapes within the eye. This will make the drawing look very flat and unrealistic. Another thing you shouldn't do is use only one type of graphite pencil. So for example here, I only used a HB pencil. This pencil cannot get very dark, so you can't get the dark values within your drawing. This leads to a lack of contrast, which makes the drawing look less realistic. Values and contrast is what makes artwork look realistic. If the highlights aren't light enough and the darks aren't dark enough, it can make the drawing appear flat and less three-dimensional. I do, did give up a little bit here and use a 4B pencil as well because the HB pencil was just so light, I had to add something slightly darker. But still, in this example, I still cannot get the values as dark as I would like. Also, you should not blend your graphite with your finger. Not only does it blend the graphite unevenly, but it can also damage the paper. The oils on your skin will stick to the paper so that any graphite added on top won't necessarily go on as smoothly anymore. I used to blend with my finger all the time when I was younger, and I think a lot of people do when they first start out with graphite because it's an easy tool to use that's right there in front of you and it's free. But not only can it damage the paper, it also can make your hands really dirty, leading to more smudges all over your paper in places you don't want smudges on, so it can get quite messy as well. Another thing that I did here was I drew lots of straight lines within the iris in the eye. When I was younger and I was drawing eyes, I would always draw lots of straight lines within the eye, like spokes within a wheel. Eyes don't really look like this, so study your reference photo clearly and see what shapes you can find within the eye. Rarely are they just straight lines. Another thing you shouldn't do is shade in your brightish, brightest highlights. Some highlights do have slightly shaded areas within them, but there are some highlights which are bright white and don't require any shading. You can use an eraser to pick up some of the graphite and make the areas look lighter, but the chances are you won't be able to get the paper back to being completely white once there's a good amount of graphite on there. Another thing I've done here is I drew the fur coming straight from the waterline. Most of the time with eyes, there's a gap between the waterline and where the fur starts properly to grow. That's the case within the reference photo that I use for this drawing anyway. Again, study your reference photo carefully and work out where the fur starts around the eye. You'll be able to see this gap when I do the do version of this drawing. Also, do not draw all the fur in the same direction and with the same pressure on your pencil. Creating lots of straight uniform lines looks very unnatural more often than not, fur is not dead straight, and in dead straight lines, they vary slightly. In this example, I've pressed quite hard, creating lots of fur strokes around the eye, and you can see that it doesn't look very natural. My last don't is don't rush. This don't eye took me about 10 minutes to draw, whereas the do eye took me about 50 minutes to draw, which is a huge difference. So take your time, start by using light layers and then building up to the dark um, values slowly. Keep comparing your drawing to the reference photo and making sure that you have everything in the correct places and that the values are all correct. So now I'm going to move on to the do version of this eye and give you my best tips to create a realistic looking eye. First of all, do outline the correct things. So as I explained before, it isn't a good idea to harshly outline every single thing that you see. But instead, look at your reference photo and pick out the parts where there are harsh outlines. So for example, some of the edges around the bottom of the eye were very harsh, so I started off by outlining those. 
Some of the highlights were also quite defined, so I lightly outlined the highlights without pressing too hard on my pencil. And instead of outlining the dark area around the pupil like I did before, I'm lightly shading in where those darker areas are with my HB pencil. I then go in with a 4B pencil and darken up some of the darker areas to create realistic drawings. I always use a few different types of graphite pencil. I usually use a HB pencil, a 4B and a 6B. This allows me to get really dark in the areas which are the darkest. I also like to use a black polychromos coloured pencil for the very darkest black parts. Using graphite is great, but when you use the really dark pencils and press hard, the graphite on the paper can go quite shiny and reflect some light, which prevents the darkest areas from looking dark enough. So I use the black coloured pencil in the really dark bits to prevent this from happening. Instead of using your fingers to blend like I did in the previous example, use a blending stump. Blending stumps are basically sticks of paper which you can rub onto your graphite to blend it. I use these for my pastel drawings as well, you can pick them up really cheap on eBay and places like that. Instead of using a light pencil to lightly shade in the lighter areas, you could use some leftover graphite which is left on your blending stump to add some shading into those areas too. Another method for blending and adding light layers of graphite onto the paper would be to use some graphite powder and a brush or a sponge. I haven't tried this technique myself as I don't have any graphite powder, but I have seen a lot of other artists use this and it works really, really well. I'll definitely have to get some and try this out at some point. Another tip is to use a small eraser. In this video, you'll see me at some point using a thin stick looking eraser, which is called the Tombow Mono Eraser. It's really thin at the tip, so you can be really precise when rubbing out. It's also refillable, so you can buy refills for it, which is handy. I'll link this in the description below if you'd like to check it out for yourself. Another good eraser is to use a kneaded eraser. I use this one by Faber-Castell. It's basically a large squishy rubber, which you can use to pat gently onto the paper to erase some of the graphite. This is handy when you want to lighten up a specific area, or if you had a smudge on the page you wanted to get rid of, you could just tap it onto the paper and get rid of the smudge pretty well. You can also shape it and mould it into a specific shape, so you could roll it out a little bit at the end to make the tip thin and then you can get some of the details into your drawing. It's a very versatile rubber to have. It's also a good idea to put your reference photo into black and white. Since there's no colour in graphite drawings, looking at a photo of a coloured image can be a bit confusing. It's much easier to see which areas are the lightest and which areas are the darkest by looking at a black and white image. This way you aren't going to be distracted by the colours and tones in the coloured image. Whilst you're drawing, regularly compare your drawing to the reference photo and check that everything's in the right place and that the dark areas are dark enough and that the highlights are as light as they should be as well. It's all, always a good idea to preserve your brightest highlights, so don't go straight in with graphite in those areas as it might be quite hard to erase and get the paper back to being pure white again. Around the lower waterline there are some harsh dark lines again, so I'm just outlining them here with a dark pencil. The inner corner also had some shading in and also some very light highlights, which you can see here I'm using the Tombow Mono Eraser to erase some of the graphite to create those highlights. The area above the eye is very dark, so I'm shading in this part gradually, starting with a HB pencil as a base. I'm then going on top with a 6B to really deepen the area up. Between each layer I like to blend it using the blending stump as I find this helps me to fill in the tooth of the paper and get the dark areas to look even darker because it gets rid of every little bit of the white of the paper. Now onto the fur around the eye. This depends on the subject you're drawing but it's usually a good idea to vary your pencil strokes. In the previous eye example I just used lots of straight pencil strokes all using similar pressure and it made the fur look very flat and two dimensional. <laughs> What I did here first, I used the leftover graphite on the blending stump to put a light layer of graphite onto the areas where I was about to draw the fur. This just puts a mid-tone onto the paper which makes it then easier for me to build up layers. Once I start to add pencil strokes to mimic the fur, I vary the pressure that I put onto the pencil. This means that there will appear to be some lighter hairs and some darker hairs adding depth to the drawing. 
I also used different grades of pencil, so I used the HB pencil for some of the fur strokes and a 4B pencil for some of the fur strokes on top to darken up the darker areas within the fur. I also made sure that I varied the direction of the fur strokes. I looked at the reference photo and worked out which direction the fur was going around different parts of the eye. The fur changes direction quite a lot around the eyes, so it's really important to pay attention to that and replicate that within your drawing. I also used the Tombow Mono Eraser again to create some lighter bits of fur on top to add a bit more depth again. I use this technique quite a lot within fur to add some subtle highlights. It's a lot easier than preserving every single subtle highlight in the fur as that would become really tedious. <clears throat> so here is the finished eye drawing. You can really see the difference between the two. The second one looks so much more three dimensional and I think that's mostly down to the fact that the values are correct and there's a lot more contrast between the lightest and the darkest areas. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful please let me know in the comments and by liking the video I'll leave all of the materials I use for this drawing in the description below if you'd like to check them out. If you'd like to see more tips videos please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye guys!